Okay, so welcome to Earth Science. Uh, this is the first section that you should be completing in regards to your alternative uh, science course. Uh, you have three sections, Earth Science, your next section will be Physics, and then after that we'll do Biology. Uh, we won't cover very much chemistry other than what we cover in Biology and Physics, just because you will have enough covered in those two to be able to complete your course. So first, if we're going to talk about the Earth, we have to talk about the solar system that we're in. So we have the sun that everything in our Earth revolves around. So when we talk about that, we talk about the heliocentric model. So Earth-centric or Terra-centric model was originally what we thought everything re revolves around the Earth, but we came to know because of Copernicus that he had a different point of view. Based on the way the moon revolves around the Earth, he believed that the way that the planets would move, that they all revolved around the sun. So thus we have the heliocentric model. So as the, the sun is apparently in a stationary place. Uh, granted, it is moving based on other around other stars in our uh, galaxy and the galaxy is moving around other galaxies in the universe. But in regards to this small little neighborhood, everything that is planet-wise and uh, and moons and all of those revolve ultimately revolve around the sun. We've come to believe this. We discovered it. Copernicus discovered it or came up with the idea, and it is what we have been doing for the last 600 years, almost. So a planet has to be a certain size, structure, and com composition. Uh, the planets, when we talk about planets, we're talking about the eight planets that revolve around the sun. Uh, so that would be Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. So other, there are other systems that classify planets by location. So inner and outer planets. So anything inside the asteroid belt is an inner planet. Anything outside the asteroid belt is an outer planet. That determines uh, what we have. So inferior planets would be those that are orbits between the Earth and Sun. And superior planets is everything outside of the Earth's orbit. So Mar Mercury and Venus are the only inferior planets. Superior planets is everything that's past Earth from Mars all the way to Neptune. So your planet. Mercury is a small planet. It is a, it's actually the smallest now that Pluto is no longer a planet. Uh, it is the closest to the sun. It's covered by craters. There's not much of a atmosphere because of how close it is to the sun. It looks more like the moon than it does like the earth. Uh, it's, it's mostly made of an iron core as from basically what we think. Uh, we haven't had very many probes make it to Mercury, so you can't very we don't, can't very well get too much information without landing on it. So Mercury has thin outer layers. The surface is covered in craters and cliffs. So some of the, what this is is because there's no true atmosphere, so there's nothing to stop all of the different particles that are coming towards it that would hit it. Normally, they would burn up in our atmosphere. Uh, surface temperatures, so anything facing the sun is up to 430 degrees Celsius. But on the opposite side, because it has no atmosphere, it is extremely cold. So a minus 170 degrees Celsius. It's pretty crazy. So Venus. Venus is actually the hottest planet in our solar system. So they are the second from the planet is referred to as the sister planet because its sizes and masses are almost exactly the same. So Venus is blank blanketed in a dense atmosphere. Uh, it is very, very high atmospheres once you get closer to the surface. So we're talking about 
pressure that would build up that could crush a tin can and be the size of a thimble. Uh, so the clouds on Venus are so dense that only 2% of the sunlight actually reaches the surface. So heat radiated from Venus's surface is absorbed by carbon dioxide gas and this gives the greenhouse effect. So we have a greenhouse effect, but it is nothing compared to what Venus's greenhouse effect is because of how many particles are inside of, how many particles of carbon dioxide gas are inside the Earth's, uh, Venus's atmosphere. So temperatures on Venus can be higher than Mercury based on this greenhouse effect. So we're talking about almost 870 degrees Fahrenheit. Nothing that we know of can live, at least that's carbon based, can live on Venus. So the third planet of the sun is Earth. This is one you know the most about. Uh, if you don't know the most about it, we're going to go much more into it over the next two or three chapters of this unit or of this uh, section. So temperatures allow for liquid water, solid water, and gas water, which is the only place on in our solar system that we know this is possible. It's ironic that we're called Earth or Terra when we're mostly water. Uh, the ozone of the Earth's atmosphere protects life from its the sun's heart, harmful rays, and then you have the magnosphere that, that also protects us from radiation of, of the sun. Uh, so life is the on Earth is the only one discovered in our entire solar system. We don't know for sure if there is water anywhere else. Uh, so there are many different environments, anything from tundra to rainforest to vents on the sea floor that allow for for life to live underwater. Um, Mars, of course, is the fourth planet from the sun. It is the last of the inner planets. Uh, it is the last of the planets that is solid. From this point on, we go into what we call the gas giants. Uh, the fourth planet from the sun is Mars. It is called the red planet because of the iron oxide gives it a rusty look. Uh, there are polar ice caps, so frozen carbon dioxide, frozen water. We know there is frozen water on Mars. Uh, changes in colorization and size of the ice, packs, ice caps have been observed. So obviously there are different seasons on Mars. Uh, colorization is due to seasonal wind blowing and it will take some of the lighter dust and blow it across over the dark darker colored dust below because it has not been uh, bleached by the sunlight so the martian atmosphere is much thinner than the earth's uh there is thought that at one point in time mars is in the goldilocks zone to where it could have had life on it uh, it is in that area to where it's not too far away from the sun. It's not clo too close to the sun for, to where it cannot have life. So, hmm. excuse me. So there is a reason why we think that there is a possibility to still have life on Mars to where we're going to be there in 2030. So we're 10 years away from getting a manned mission to Mars. It's pretty cool. Uh, Mars has two heavily cratered moons, and those are Phobos and Deimos. And that's it for the inner planets. So outer planets, Jupiter. Jupiter is extremely large. Uh, it is the fifth planet from the sun. It is the largest planet in our solar system. Uh, you can actually see, even though it is much further away than Venus or Mars, it is one of the three planets that you can see with your naked eye uh, when you look out at the night sky. So Venus is one of your brighter stars. <laughs> and Mars is one of your redder st looking stars. Those would be the ones that you see. This one's more lighter bluish than the other two. Uh, so it's composed of mostly hydrogen and helium. 
is called a gas giant because of the fact that it's composed mostly of those high pressure gases. Uh, and then there is a large storm called the Great Red Spot that has been going on for, as far as we know, millions of years because it's been going on for as long as we've been able to see it. And the fact that it's basically like a hurricane that travels around the entire planet is pretty crazy. Jupiter has 63 known moons. Uh, many are small and rocky, basically asteroids. Uh, four are actually large enough to be considered small planets, but because they revolve around another planet, they, can, they have to be moons. Uh, NASA scientists believe that water exists on, on some of their moons. So Europa is actually the one that we expect could possibly be able to sustain life if we were to ever uh, try to move out that far. Saturn. Saturn is a sixth planet is from the sun. It is a outer planet gas giant. It is composed of complex, it has a complex ring system on the outside of it, which is made of water vapor, different kinds of gas, uh, dust particles, mostly hydrogen and helium though. Uh, you can also see very many moons around it. There's actually more moons around Saturn than any other one in, in the solar system. Uh, so Saturn's rings are composed of billions of ice and rock particles. Like I said, dust, hydrogen, same thing that's made inside of the planet. Uh, the ring systems are over... 280,000 kilometers wide. But not very thick at all. So Uranus, or Uranus, is the seventh planet from the sun. It is four times larger than Earth with 27 moons. So Uranus is composed of hydrogen, helium, and some methane. Methane is what gives it that blue tint. Uh, its axis is actually tilted, so it is nearly parallel to the plane of its orbit. So instead of thinking of how our Earth is tilted on its axis to where it spins at an angle, this basically spins over the top of itself. That's the special thing about Uranus. Uh, Neptune is the eighth planet for the sun. Oh, by the way, Uranus also has a set of rings around it, just much smaller compared to, to, Nep to uh, Jupiter. Neptune is the eighth planet from the sun. It is. It has more methane, so it makes it look even bluer. I believe Voyager 2 passed it in 86, and Neptune in 89. The only space spacecraft to fly by each planet. Pretty interesting. Uh, I can probably, let me pause real quick and I can show you where the Voyager is. If I look it up real quick. Let's see. Okay, so I found a map of what we have the Voyager 2 doing. So basically, you see it leaves Earth uh, it goes around, makes contact with Neptune, and then makes contact with or contact with Uranus, and then Neptune shortly after. And you see it is on a straight trajectory out. It is actually now, according in 2020, outside of our solar system. It is in an interstellar space, and it will continue going until it gets to the next star system. And as far as we know, it'll never make it there in our lifetimes because it takes, it'll probably take hundreds of thousands of years to actually make it there. Uh, but that being said, going on. So dwarf planets are smaller. They do not ha necessarily have their own orbit. So they are nearly round orbit objects uh, that orbit the sun but and that are not sat but are not the sun's 
satellites, they have not cleared the debris in their orbits. So basically, you'll see that Neptune actually goes further out than Pluto, and Pluto is actually driven off its its orbit around the sun because of how close it gets to Neptune. And that's what you'll see with a lot of these different dwarf planets. They don't have a defined, so to say, orbit that isn't influenced by other objects. And that's why it's a dwarf planet. Uh, a comet is composed of rocks and dust particles uh, and frozen water. So as it approaches the sun, it begins to vaporize. It is basically an asteroid, but because of these particles are, are frozen inside of it, it will get closer to the sun and begin to give that tail. Uh, so it is a blowed, bright cloud called a coma around the nucleus that creates this tail. So as soon as it vaporizes, it, it will start to turn into what we call a comet. And then as it goes back away from the sun, it starts freezing. And this continues on and on. So most comets come from two places. Uh, the vast disk of the icy comets come from the Cuniper belt near Neptune's orbit. You saw that in a picture earlier. Uh, once in the orbit around the sun, it appears at predictable times. So we call it like Halley's Comet. I believe Halley's Comet comes back in your lifetime, actually. Uh, asteroids are very rocky. They don't have very much frozen particles on them. Uh, most asteroids are found in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Asteroids can be anything from the size of a dime to the size of 500 kilometers in, di in diameter. Uh, meteoroids. Meteoroids are objects within the solar system that, are that I'm talking about, like what these small meteors are. Uh, most burn up completely as they go in. They're called shooting stars. So when you see a shooting star, it's actually a piece of dust or rock that's burning up on the entry into Earth. When they strike the Earth, it is called a meteorite. Meteoroids burn, burn in the atmosphere. Meteorites do not. All right, so I have a web quest for you to do. I would like you to do that. Then we'll go over the Earth, Sun, and Moon system so that we get a better idea of what we're going on with, with your immediate surroundings. And then we will have a quiz over this section, and we will go on to section two.